So what I have here is my 83 ferret bank of capacitors. If I want to use them to start that vehicle, I'm going to need to use multiple banks of these to get the capacitance higher. What I'm doing right now is checking to see how much voltage drop I get along my leads coming out of the bank so that I can size the wires correctly. So what I'm measuring is I have my current shunt here and I'm going to be measuring the power going in through the power supply initially and then after it's charged I'm going to take and use just a cheap load tester in order to measure the voltage drop along this wire for our positive lead and our negative lead. To do this I basically just take each channel on the data acquisition system and run the positive and negative to each end of the wire and it'll measure the voltage drop through it. So turning on the power supply we can see we're charging at just under 5 amps of current and the data acquisition is reading about the same thing through the current shunt it's reading virtually no voltage drop right now on either the positive or the negative wires which being this is a 10 gauge wire should be expected once it's charged up I will put the heavier load on it and see what we get so we apply the load and we can see that we were over 80 amps and this should be recording the voltage drop at the different amperages. Here is the data that I got from doing the voltage drop test with a 10 gauge wire on the capacitor bank. The load that I applied when it was at close to that 15 volt mark was 95 amps. Basically holding on that load as the voltage dropped in the capacitor bank the amperage dropped I took the results of the voltage drop on both the positive and negative wire and added them together and then graphed them against the amperage at the time. So if I were to apply 90 amps you can see that I would have close to 0.35 volt drop between both the positive and negative wires. I repeated the same test only switching to the same length but an 8 gauge wire on the capacitor bank. You can see that at 90 amps I have under 0.25 volt drop. Now taking those numbers and applying them to what I'm using. When I did the test in the first video and was measuring the amperage that the car was using in order to turn the motor over I was getting approximately a maximum of 225 amps during the cranking process. If I take and want to get close to a 500 ferret bank of capacitors, those are 83 ferrets apiece. So I will need a total of six banks of those. This means that when the motor is turning over, they are approximately going to have one-sixth of that total amp load on each one of the banks and on each one of those lead wires. So about 37.5 amp load each. If we round it up to 40 just for easier calculations. So at 40 amps, using the 10 gauge wire, you can see that I would have approximately 0 0.15 volt drop between the positive and negative leads coming out. By switching to the 8 gauge wire at 40 amps I'll have approximately 0.1 volt drop. This makes a big difference in designing this because I was measuring all of these things on this car at the battery terminals and this voltage drop will be what's connecting these capacitor banks together so this voltage drop will actually be before the point that I'm measuring. So every part of this that drops the voltage is actually going to skew any of the calculations from what I originally had. I could experiment with going up to a larger gauge wire, but 
I don't think that I'm going to get a whole lot more improvement over this and 0.1 volts a drop is pretty minimal for what I'm doing as long as I stick with having at least six banks of capacitors. Um, if I end up finding larger rated capacitors and go down in the number of banks, I will have to go up to a larger gauge wire in order to avoid the same problem. Hopefully this was interesting. If you see any errors in my calculations, please let me know. And thank you very much for watching.